It's disappointing for me when I hear Christians lie, but I have to address three Christian lies that have crept up in social media concerning the nomination of the next Supreme Court justice. There are three things that are just either partial truth or they're just outright lies. Number one, there's a claim that if Amy Barrett is confirmed to the Supreme Court, which these Christians don't want to happen for some reason, abortion will be banned. Number two, these Christians claim, without any stats, that abortion declines during Democrat presidencies. In fact, I will say they have manipulated the stats, and I'll show you why. Number three, they claim that if you as a Christian don't vote for Joe Biden because he is a pro-abortion, pro-choice candidate, then you are a, quote, one-vote, uh, one-issue voter. Well, first of all, I recall that God gave Adam a one-tree-to-avoid test, and Jesus gave us a one-way-to-heaven offer. So if you make fun of God and Jesus and me for that, I'm totally okay with it, all right? I think that this is the issue. Protecting infant life is the litmus test for a Christian, whether you should vote for someone or not, because Exodus 20 says, thou shalt not murder. And Isaiah 28 says that these wicked people, these wicked rulers said in verse 15, we have made a covenant with death and with hell we are in agreement. And the Bible says, no, God, God says your covenant with death will be annulled. All right, so let's take a look at uh, these questions that people have about Amy Barrett. Is she a threat to us. She is a charismatic Catholic. In fact, in my book, uh, Trump's Unfinished Business, I said one of the things that is lacking on the Supreme Court is where are the born-again Christians? Why is it always dominated by Jews and Catholics? And this time we have a born-again, tongue-talking, charismatic Catholic, Amy Barrett. And just because you don't like someone, it doesn't mean the country is in crisis. In fact, I want to tell you uh, uh, title my message today, Love Wins. Love, love, love wins. And you'll see why in a second. Amy Barrett is a charismatic Catholic, the oldest of seven children. She and her husband also have seven uh, children, but many people don't hear this in the media. Two of them, they adopted from Haiti. And one of them has, the youngest one has Down syndrome. Amy Barrett clerk for Justice Antonin Scalia, who is an originalist, and she also is an originalist. That means she interprets the Constitution the way it was written in the beginning, not manipulating and changing and calling it a living document. At the age of 48, which is just slightly older than me, she will be the youngest justice on the Supreme Court, which means she will be there for a long time, easily 30 years. I think it was Dinesh D'Souza that said this. Basically, Trump's strategy is this. Find out what is the most annoying thing to the Democrats and just do it repeatedly, over and over. And so he's picked someone who's clearly originalist, conservative, and very young. And she's a woman, and she's got a great track record. She's a professor of law. It's very hard to fault her because she's already been approved to the Court of Appeals. So how are you going to discredit her? So he's done a very, very smart thing by picking her. We believe that this is a good choice, but shockingly, many Christians are spreading lies about this subject. So the first thing is, people say they're concerned that um, Roe v. Wade will be overturned. Well, in fact, Isaiah 28 verse 18 has already prophesied that your covenant with death will be annulled. There's no greater covenant with death than killing over 60 million babies. That's going to be overturned. So Roe v. Wade will be overturned. It, it cannot be stopped. But it doesn't mean that abortion will be banned. And I think people who don't understand the U.S. system of government need to not comment so much about something they don't know. So please, uh, you know, pull back the hysteria and the hype and understand this, that even if Roe v. Wade were overturned, all that means is the issue will be kicked back to the states, and the states will decide. That's why it's called the United States of America. There are like 50 different countries that are joined together, you know, in, in federation, in a federal uh, uh, system. So 
There are only a few states like Louisiana and Arkansas that have laws that would ban abortion the day Roe v. Wade becomes overturned. And these are called post-Roe activation laws. Okay? For all the other 48 states, they will take this matter up and they will consider. So in a certain sense, both sides will not get what they want because all abortion will not be banned. I predict abortion will never be completely banned in the United States unless there is a constitutional amendment. And that's a very big hurdle to, to pass over. To pass that, you'd have to have a third great awakening. You'd have to have people who are now morally awake, spiritually sensitive, and they realize, hey, you don't want to hurt children. Not all people have that. But there are states that have that, and states will decide that issue. So even if abortion were banned in some states or all states, what's the fear? You know, we don't live in 1973 anymore. In 2020, there is no need for any abortion. Have you considered that? We have, in all 50 states, safe haven laws, which means that no woman has to care for a child that she does not want. She can simply drop the baby off at a hospital or at a fire station, and there'll be no costs, no questions, and no more responsibility. That's true in all 50 states. So legally, there are no unwanted children in America. Spiritually, there are no unwanted children in America. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There are two million women waiting every year to adopt babies. So if you just give up your responsibility and give the baby, the state will then, at no cost, give the baby to a family that loves to have the baby. And then guess what? You don't harm yourself, you don't harm the baby, and you bless an adoptive parent. Love wins. This, in fact, this is a triple love solution. Love, love, love in every way. So it's a great solution. It's love for you, love for the baby, and love for the adoptive parent. Why would you abort in 2020? We're not barbaric. We're not unaware anymore that this is 100% human. The life in your womb is 100% human. And that child can feel pain. The pain of abortion, of being dismembered, is painful. So we're you know, much more scientifically advanced, and we have many better options now with safe haven laws. So let's talk about this. Abortion is declining. That is true. Over 50 million abortions have been performed since 1973. Over 20 million abortions alone since, since 2000. But there has been a steady long-term decline in U.S. abortion rate since 1980. The U.S. abortion rate has fallen by 53% between 1980 and 2017, the most recent year for which we have data, and the rate is lower now than it was in 1973, the year Roe v. Wade. So are there less abortions during Democrat years? That's the question, and that's the claim on social media memes, that there's an especially large decline in abortion rate during the Clinton administration. The fact is, this decline has persisted through both Republican and Democrat presidential administrations. And why has abortion declined? Not because of Bill Clinton and not because of any Democrat policy. Michael New wrote about this in December 2017 and said, Democrat presidents are not responsible for declines in abortion rate. But the irresponsible media, the fake news, and even some gullible Christians are spreading on social media this lie. And you know why they do it? Because the Democrats know that they need the pro-life voters. They need that vote. So they're trying to pull the wool over their eyes. And I'm telling you, that's not true. I'm going to give you five reasons why abortion is declining and is not declining because of the Democrats. Number one, the large uh, reported decline is because California quit reporting their data to the CDC in 1997. And this is the same thing that's going on with coronavirus and the flu. They say, well, so many people are dying from coronavirus with coronavirus. Not from, not by, but with coronavirus. And then they simply don't count all of the other comorbidities, comor the other diseases that would have killed the person, or the age of the person, that person may die anyway. People in aged care home, a certain percentage would die anyway. But they say they don't count that, and so now it looks like everything is COVID-related. This is dishonest. 
So they say, well, you know, abortion rate uh, declined uh, during the Democrat years. But the, the Democrats won't even report. Number two, you have to account for what's going on at state level. Republicans have made steady progress winning majorities in state legislatures. In 1992, Republicans controlled both chambers of the state le legislature in less than 10 states. It's very similar to Australia. The labor controls everything at city level, at state level, and so it becomes very hard, even though you might have some conservatives at a federal level, very hard to change anything at ground level to defend family values, religious freedom, freedom of speech, things like that. Because it's kind of like here and over in the states previously, the conservatives and the Christians gave up on local government. So that began to change in America from 1992. And currently, Republicans control both chambers of the state legislature in 29 states. In other words, they've crossed the majority. 25 is the midpoint. They've already crossed it. 29 states have Republican-controlled uh, you know, Congresses. This has made it much easier to pass protective pro-life laws. Number three, Republican-appointed Supreme Court justices have upheld a range of pro-life laws, including funding limits on abortion facilities, waiting periods, informed consent laws, parental involvement laws, and partial birth abortion bans. Number four, you have to account for what's going on in the heavenly realm. Regular prayer and Christians, Christian presence outside of abortion facilities have fueled the reduction in the murder of babies. And number five, safe haven laws have taken away responsibility for unplanned pregnancies. Therefore, a higher percentage of unintended pregnancies are being carried to term. Isn't that good news? In 1980, approximately 46% of unintended pregnancies were carried to term, so less than half. But by 2011, we cross the halfway mark. By 2011, that figure had risen to 58%. So don't kill the baby. Don't hurt yourself with abortion trauma. And give the state the child. You can walk away and be free. Now, before I go, I have to mention that we've dispelled these lies already. We've shown you facts. And I pray Christians are not complicit in spreading these social media memes and, and stories that are absolutely false. Number one, the battle is not won just because Amy Barrett becomes justice. Uh, abortion is not banned just because Roe v. Wade is overturned, and it will get overturned. And, but there's no fear because there's safe haven laws. Nobody has to be responsible if they don't want the responsibility. Two million women per year want the joy of raising a baby. All right? And the last lie is it's not true that abortion declines during Democrat presidencies. So this is a, uh, not just a one issue with Joe Biden. There are many, many, many other issues that we as a Christian would have trouble with. But to just make light of killing babies and then lie with very bad statistics that don't tell the full truth, that is not Christian. That is a very unchristian thing. And I've been telling people, if you have time before the election, but of course afterwards it's fine, I answer these things. I answer these common objections because the Lord told me to compile a list of President Trump's pro-Christian accomplishments into one book. And we did it with great references and, and great help, a lot of researchers, and it's amazing how much the left stream media has lied to us. The left stream media, they're not mainstream, they're left stream media has hidden so many things that this administration has done, and, but what re really is what God has done through this administration. You should be celebrating. If the name of the person doing it wasn't Trump, I'm telling you all, the, all of Christendom would be shouting for joy. But because it's Trump and the media hates him, so much of it is covered up and you don't know the truth. Get President Trump's pro-Christian accomplishments as soon as you can. And, and we made it really actually extra cheap so that you can get multiple copies. A lot of your you know, you have emailed us and said you want to get multiple copies. And I saw one photo. I got to tell this. I'll put it up on the video. 
uh, one of our friends went to a, a Trump rally and gave this book out to like 30 different people. Then at the end of the rally, there were like 30 people lining up for Eric Trump to sign my book. And it's so cool. It was great. So he must have seen that book 30 times. And I hope, Eric Trump, you've told your dad about it. Because it's just facts. There are facts compared with Scripture. Facts compared with Scripture. We need to be informed with facts compared to Scriptures. Amen? Uh, before I go, I, I said i got to mention this. This is very insidious. Planned Parenthood's share of abortion has been growing. Even though abortion has been declining, their share in the market has been increasing. This one organization currently commits nearly 40% of the entire nation's murder of babies. Planned Parenthood is a racist, eugenics institution from its foundation that must be defunded. It is a travesty that millions, hundreds of millions of dollars go towards this. If somebody wants it funded privately, do it. But why on the taxpayer uh, pocket? It's, it's just sickening. So I say we welcome the first born again, charismatic Catholic Amy Barrett to the Supreme Court of the United States of America. We will be praying for you. We will be praying for all nine justices and we'll be praying for more nominations to come in President Trump's second term because he has 10 more things, not just this one thing, nine more things to make 10, nine more things that is on God's agenda. And that's why God told me, write it ahead of time, and the Supreme Court was one of them. If you go back to my previous book, Trump's Unfinished Business, 10 Prophecies to Save America, I said this was coming and we need a born-again person on the Supreme Court. Boom, tick, another one done. But we got things to do about climate change, education reform, gender equality, issues of family, all of these things God wants to do. And Trump could do it if he is humble and obeys God in the next four years. We can see amazing turnarounds, amazing breakthroughs. We thought America's going to have civil war. It could have its best years ahead. So I'm pulling for you. I'm praying for you. I'll be with you all the way, no matter rain or sunshine, light or dark. We are here to preach the gospel to you, and we pray that you partner with us, you be with us. We're going along this ride. We're expecting a great awakening all the way till Jesus comes. Amen? And then when we're removed, okay, sure, there'll be tribulation, but not while we're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Jesus is the greater one who lives in you and in all of us. God bless you. Remember, keep looking up. Look up, look up, yeah.